Hello and uh, welcome to Financial Insight Zambia. My name is Mpanda Klima Debbie Hunter and I will be your host. Now we are on the Copper Belt in Chilabombwe at the Suppliers and Services Fair by Mingomba Mine. Interesting on this exclusive episode, we have the CEO of a Cobalt Metals, Mfke Makai. Mfke, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back on Financial Insights. Amazing. Indeed it is. And, um, you know, quite uh, a spectacular speech you had delivered yesterday. And uh, we've been following uh, the story at this exciting event. Now, are you able to walk us through what inspired the 2025 edition of the fair? Yes. This is our inaugural edition of a supply and services fair. Mm -hmm. Mingomba was incorporated, as I mentioned, in December 2022. We've been doing exploration work over the last three years, mm -hmm. and we're moving into mine development. Mm -hmm. So having this fair was a way to put our feelers into the market, mm -hmm. also to prepare the market of the next phase of a project build. As you're building a, a multi-year project, you need to understand what services and goods you'll need into the future. So this was a planning session, in a sense, to feel who's on the market internationally, locally, in Zambia, on the Copper Belt, and here in Chidrawombwe, mm -hmm. but also bring all stakeholders together into one voice, one purpose, and one, of, and one vision mm -hmm. of where the next 12 to 18 months are going to go. Mm -hmm. What will be the needs of the project? Mm -hmm. Who's here to offer those services? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure, for me, I don't impact the project schedule by understanding who's on the market? And also, for contractors who are interested in partnering with us, mm -hmm. what do they need to do to allow align themselves and to position themselves in the market. So think of it as a competitive market space to do business openly and transparently. Mm -hmm. So that's where the inspiration came from. My team is also forecasting what they'll need to do to prepare for the big milestone of starting a shaft sink. It's huge. It's going to need a lot of people, a lot of support. And we also needed um, regulators and government to be in the room. So we are moving with one voice. So, so now. You've mentioned about uh, soon starting the, the shaft sinking. Yes. And uh, we know in, in the usual space, the mines have to take about 10 years. Now you've mentioned three. How have you been able to run through into this? Cobalt yes. technology is amazing. Uh -huh. I think to, to step up, if you look at the mining industry, mm -hmm. mine development, exploration and development takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Exploration is hard work. It's deeply scientific work. And it takes a lot to turn a potential resource into a mining reserve. Mm -hmm. So all that work required um, strength from having a great geoscientific team. We've got ex exceptional data science uh, team from a worldwide perspective, being able to explore rigorously and massively move projects, hopefully into development, but many exploration projects are known to fail. Mm -hmm. How do we fail quickly and exit quickly? And that's what Cobalt Metals is about. How do we leverage artificial intelligence technologies to help us make decisions of where the future mines will come from? Mm -hmm. Because there is demand for these materials into the future. So that's where our competitive advantage is. In the value chain of mineral exploration and mining, we are further at the upstream of doing discovery work and building a discovery machine using technology. So in that three-year window, we've drilled 120,000 meters of rock. We've drilled some of the Amazing. deepest holes on the Zambian copper belt. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been able to define this high-grade, high-quality resource that now needs to move into its next stage of feasibility studies, design engineering, so we can now build all the infrastructure to support getting it into production. Amazing, that's fantastic. Thank you. So now, um, how, how important is the local content law uh, for the Zambia mining industry? It's coming in at a critical stage. I think everybody kind of knows uh, the mining sector, firstly, is, it's a highly specialized sector, but it also has layers of how you contribute. There's the pure mining sector and then there's the indirect services to the mining sector. Mm -hmm. And often it's been felt that um, local suppliers uh, miss a window to do certain spaces of work where there's high value projects or high value contracts mm -hmm. and are mostly congested in, I'll call it, relatively low value or non core goods and services. So the local content law talks about enablement, capacity and capability building of local suppliers but also you're playing in a global market space where the technology of supply as well is also evolving. Mm -hmm. So how are we educating our local base from an R&D perspective to be able to understand when you're supplying a particular good or service into the mines, mm -hmm. how does it fit into what the mine actually needs? So it is a two tier process in terms of a company or a business in the mine needing a service and finding the capacity and capability in the region. In many cases, that's very hard around the world. We need to be clear about that. 
um, a lot of things have been decentralized into different regions that have built up their strength. Mm -hmm. And I think Zambia is in a place that we need to figure out within the mining space, what is our strength? One of the big things is we've got a massive population. We've also got a mining uh, population that's been in the space, you know, for many, many decades. Mm -hmm. How do we tap into those opportunities to build resilient businesses, but also to build out the economy and keep capital in the country? Amazing, fantastic. Now, focusing on the, the suppliers for which this fair is done, um, the government emphasizes uh, three things, uh, timely delivery, it talks about quality, and uh, what was, what's the third one again? Time delivery, quality, and right price. And right mm. price. How do you, what's your position as, as, as me, me Momba, uh on, on these three uh, positions that the government is trying to ensure that every mining company has? Mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on that first to start? So, so at a basis, at a simple level, those three things are important. Mm -hmm. When you move into providing a service, so it's more than timely delivery. Mm -hmm. It's also about capability and technical know-how. Mm -hmm. You have to also know your product. You have to know how you support that product to keep it running. Mm -hmm. Many mining products, uh, even in the manufacturing industry, have a certain mine life. If you think of a component or a piece of equipment, or even like your car, mm -hmm. you know that this car might need to run for 10 years. Yes. And I'll need to know where am I going to get my spares for that life of 10 years. And if it breaks down, how do I replace it? There's an element of service delivery. And in the services sector, this is about customer satisfaction and customer service. Mm -hmm. That part, I think, is, I would add it as a fourth layer. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about customer service because I can have the right price, I can have it delivered on time, um, I can have the right quality, but if you can't service it, mm -hmm. all these three are not going to matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to have the technical know-how to support that product for the life of it being in use. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really simplifying something quite clear yeah. But then you also have a place where you are building. And we are in mind development. Some elements, it's a build. So it's not even a right quality, right price. You're building a long-term project, like sinking a shaft. You know, yeah. beyond right price and time delivery, how are you actually going to build it? It's got building blocks. It requires project management. It requires project scheduling. And there's a layer of complexity in how you deliver that particular good and service. Amazing. Now, let's, let's just delve a bit on the on the quality part mm. now uh we had a bit of a, a misfortune at the event yes. mm -hmm. where we had the the tent uh, uh thing that happened mm -hmm. here how have you been able to handle it as as, as ceo first of all <laughs> and as a I mean, yeah team? yes have been able to handle it yeah, of course because we are now talking about quality yes yeah, so we obviously had a hundred meter long uh tent and a whirlwind got inside the second tent mm -hmm. and flipped the tent over. Okay. Fortunately, the response of our paramedics, we were fortunate to have paramedics on site mm -hmm. and have our safety and security team on site and our partners in AfriVenture mm -hmm. immediately deal with it. We had no major injuries. People evacuated in a calm manner mm -hmm. out of the place. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it was in the mid afternoon. So most of the dialogue and the engagement had happened. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a lesson, you know, when life gives you lemonades, today we're on the second day. Yes. Everybody has come back and put up their gazebos outside. And, working and I think we've even got more numbers than yesterday. <laughs> yes. So it is a lesson learned and we just need to get better. Chidirawombwe is, is windy and we're getting into the peak mm -hmm. of, um, into the rain season. So yes. it's also learning that it's a form of the windy city here. And interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's good. And now we had uh, uh, three key speeches yesterday. One, one from the minister, one from yourself, and one from the, from the president of uh, uh, the, the, the business, mm -hmm. Chilabombo, it is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, he gave uh, quite a, a remarkable speech. Do you have any key takeaways from what he had uh, emphasized on yesterday? Especially the relationship between Mingomba and the suppliers, the yes. factors. Yes. I think we step back and say that in this hall, we have different levels of suppliers. We've got foreign, international, multinational suppliers. Mm -hmm. We've got large Zambian suppliers, mid tiers. And we also have the small businesses and the SMEs. In any economy, SMEs underpin it. And in Chirira Womboy, you don't want people to feel left out. You can imagine when a project like this comes in and you just see other companies coming in. You, you start thinking, where, where are we? Really? We are the residents of this town. We are the community of this town. Yeah. And it's also important for the social license. So we partnered with them. Um, most of them are really, really small SMEs. They're into the supply of non-core goods and services. And some of these things, other contractors can source from them. So we gave them a platform there for them to meet other contractors and offer their services from a community perspective, but even for building good business relationships. There are certain things we need to do 
with SMEs. That's, that's fundamental to any economy around the world, is how you enable SMEs through the right policy and also the right intentions from um, stakeholder engagement. They call it enlightened stakeholder engagement. In driving inclusion. So the speech was very clear. Many SMEs feel left out in terms of big multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. How do we bring them closer early? And I mentioned that it's also not a personal entitlement to be substandard. Mm -hmm. I want to build excellence in them. I, I, I generally like business as a yes. person. I just yes. think business builds wealth mm -hmm. and business builds countries. Good yes. business builds good countries. Yes. So how do we work with them and enable them? I think some of the networks they've made today, they are going to be hosting some of the multinational drillers at their gala dinner tonight. Yes. For me, that's what I wanted. And the goal has been achieved. Amazing. Now, lastly, as we, as we close off, um, what is your reaction uh, of the positive sentiments from the Minister of Mines on day one of the event? I think it's very clear that government or the public sector and the private sector need to be aligned on many things. Many times there will be a healthy tension and we might disagree on how to do things. Mm -hmm. But in this regard, across business and all industries in Zambia, whether you're talking about mining, tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, mm -hmm. you need policies that are going to grow the economy and have an impact, positive impact on the GDP, but create jobs. And I think that's the government's focus. Creating jobs so you have getting a stable supply, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of suppliers, yeah. a stable tax base to help fund running the country. Mm -hmm. So the minister's sentiments were very, very well taken. They echo the voice of the government in building a great policy environment. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very happy, firstly, that he took time to attend, this being his hometown as well, but also to, to drive inclusion of everyone. Everyone has a role to play, not only Mingomba Mine, anyone in the mining uh, value chain. And the message was also now out to the multinationals who may have not gone and known what was happening in Zambia from a policy environment. Yes. It's not to go and choke businesses unnecessarily, mm -hmm. but let's find a way to collaborate. So very, very happy. And I mean, as government and private sector works, there's always going to be some boxing. That's normal. <laughs> Nobody should complain about that. Yes. It's how you build uh, a country. Mm -hmm. So we might have, we're having convergence in a different manner. Mm -hmm. A bigger and a stronger private sector means that the government is doing its job. Amazing. Yes. There you go. There you go. So now let's leave for those that are of trying to register as suppliers, contractors for Mingomba, what is it that you are expecting of them, at least uh, as, as Mingomba mine? Obviously, we have a lot of people that are enthusiastic to try and source contracts from the mine, mm -hmm. but we would want to hear from you. So twofold. Mm -hmm. Some things we might not contract out directly because somebody else we contract to would subcontract. So this platform was a cross-networking. Mm -hmm. Not everything will come from Mingomba. Mm -hmm. Some suppliers here have businesses with other mines. Maybe they've networked on that. As long as it's, posi and it's got a net positive effect, mm -hmm. I'm happy on that end. Secondly, on compliance. There's just basic compliance with Zambian law. Mm -hmm. Be registered at PACRA, declare your interests, have all your requirements, whether it's NIMA, NAPSA, workers' compensation, those are, those are expected, they are not negotiable. Okay. In terms of how we deal, Mingomba, from a values perspective, we did a, a mini ethics induction video on how we do business. I always say people, me, I don't give contracts. The CEO does not give they contracts. <laughs> I, I empower, I've got a very empowered team who know how to do their job very, very well. Mm -hmm. And we subscribe to the, the law. So in terms of familiar relationships, conflict of interest, it's just about making declarations. It doesn't mean no, just make your declarations. That's what we care about. And have things like Mother's Day. Mother's Day is important for me, maybe as a woman, there's a benefit of that. <laughs> yes. Employ differently abled people, mm -hmm. employ the youth, employ people coming out of school, have internship programs. It's, it might not be easy because every business is looking at its model and its margins, but when a business is good, it will be able to do all those things and find a way to support an initiative in the community or support an environmental initiative, particularly in the mining sector. The environment is very close to us as well. So those things, some people don't see them as mandatory. They are, they are moral principles for us of the type of businesses we want to do business with. Amazing. So there you go, our viewers. Uh, we have been talking to Mfke Makai, the CEO of Hobod Metals, right here in Chilawombe at the Mingomba Suppliers and Services uh, Fair. My name has been Pan Kunyadebi Hante, and I am your host. And as we say at Financial Insight, get to know.